Ola Shokanbi is a certified financial education instructor, money expert, and the CEO, best-selling author, and founder of Clever Girl Finance. Ola empowers women to ditch debt, save money, and build real wealth and become accountable with their finances through one of the largest personal finance platforms in the U.S. We're here with Bola today to talk about how Clever Girl Finance was created through her own personal finance journey. Hi, Bola. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're so excited to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how your personal story um, got you to where you were with your community? Yes, absolutely. So like you mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. It's an online financial education platform for women. I am also a wife and a mom to six-year-old twins. And I started Clever Girl Finance about five years ago, really out of personal need. I had gotten to a point where um, I was just always talking about money with my friends based on my past experience. And my friends were always asking me questions about how I was saving, how I was investing. So coming right out of college, um, I was able to navigate my personal finances, you know, and learn what it meant to budget, what it meant to save, what it meant to invest. And about three and a half years after I graduated, I was able to save over $100,000. And so that was an experience that I shared with my friends, you know, through the years. And those money conversations that we had um, were things, was something that I always did just based on my experience growing up. So my mom got married young. She was the mother of, she's the mother of four kids. And um, as she you know, was getting older in her marriage. Um, She got married at 19. She started to recognize things that were happening with her friends that she was not comfortable with. So she was seeing her friends going through divorces and just not knowing about the family finances, um, being left out of a lot of things. She also had friends who wanted to exit bad relationships, but they couldn't because they didn't have the financial backing. And so As I got older, you know, navigating my own finances, I started to see a lot of these situations happen with my own friends, with women that I knew, you know, acquaintances, coworkers, and, you know, having that conversation about money was really, really important to me. So I would talk to my friends about money all the time. I would talk to my coworkers about money all the time. And then eventually I created a blog, Clever Girl Finance at the time, to just talk about what I had learned, my experience with saving and investing. And that was the foundation for uh, what Clever Girl Finance is today. And then you talk about on your site how the biggest recurring theme that you see in women is that we're not talking about money and financial wellness enough, and we don't involve ourselves as much as we should when it comes to finances. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so when it comes to personal finances, you know, um, and women, we carry a lot of um, shame, embarrassment about what we feel we haven't done well, or what we feel we don't know. And for many of us, the money conversation was not something we grew up having at the dinner table, right? We didn't talk about budgeting or investing or saving with our parents. And so just because, because we've not had that background, we've not had that experience, um, we may feel embarrassed or judged or shamed or just not overly concerned about talking about money because we're not used to having the conversation. However, when you look at today's world, right, many women, despite the gender wage gap, which is impactful to us being able to build wealth, many women are in a position where they're earning more money than their grandmothers or their mothers. Many women are in the position where they are, you know, we are graduating college at record paces. We're opening businesses compared to our male counterparts. Um, Many women are choosing not to get married. Many women are single mothers. And so we're in this position where now more than ever, we need to take ownership and pay attention to our finances because nobody can care more about our financial well-being than we can. But what I've noticed is that once women are empowered with the knowledge, they do exceptionally well with their finances. Once they get comfortable talking about money, once they start to understand how to goal set, how to plan, how to invest, it becomes something that they are proud of doing. And so Clever All Finance is all about, you know, allowing women to have that conversation in a safe and comfortable space, almost like talking to your girlfriends. Because when we talk with our girlfriends, we talk about everything under the sun. (laughs) We talk about, you know, what we have for dinner, our babies. We talk about reality TV. And so we should make money part of our natural conversation, whether or not we grew up talking about it or not. I completely agree. I think it, you're right. When you talk about with your girlfriends things, you'd go a little deeper than you normally would with you know, other people. Also, can you tell our audience a little bit more about the roadmap resource you offer and what the end goal of it is going to be for them when they go through it? 
Yeah, so the Cleverwell Financial Map is a six stage or six component guide that helps you step by step to creating a detailed financial plan for yourself. So one of the big questions that we get from our audience is where do I start or I'm doing certain things, I'm budgeting, I'm saving, but I have debt to pay off or I'm investing, but do I really have enough of of an emergency fund and our roadmap basically helps you lay out all the steps you should be taking through each of those six components in terms of how should you set your goals how should you adjust your mindset because everything you want to accomplish starts in your head and you being able to feel confident and capable of accomplishing your goals it talks about budgeting you know goal setting um, about saving for emergencies for sinking funds which are planned upcoming expenses it talks about investing it also talks about creating a plan for you know a will and a, you know your estate you know regardless of where you are right now so it basically guides any woman through the six key steps she needs to take to create a solid financial plan and build confidence in the fact that she has a plan in place um, for her future self and also I came across something that you said that I think a lot of people would um, it would resonate with them and you said it's not about how much you earn or about your past financial mistakes. It's about what you do with what you have and about moving forward with the lessons you've learned and most importantly, believing that you can succeed. So what advice with that can you give to people to make the most of what they have gone through with these money lessons and mistakes from the past? Yeah. So, you know, when you think about it, right, and you look at anyone you admire who is incredibly successful or incredibly wealthy, a celebrity, you know, a business person, they have made money mistakes as well, right? But when it comes to mistakes, what happens, especially with us as women, is that we make the mistake and then we start to tell ourselves, oh, I'm so bad with money. I can't do this. I'm not capable. I've already had all these terrible mistakes. I co-signed that loan. I maxed out that credit card. I didn't pay that bill on time. It affected my credit, et cetera. And we start to tell ourselves we are bad with money. However, if you, you know, if you were to look at it from a different perspective and tell yourself, well, wait a minute, I have made this mistakes, but what can I learn from this? What was the experience like? What went wrong? What is something that happened that I never want to happen to me again? And take all those lessons. Yes, the mistakes hurt, they're painful, they make you emotional. But if you can just take out some time and be objective about your mistakes and then take the lessons and apply them to your next steps, you're already setting yourself up for success because you haven't failed unless you stop trying. And so for anyone who's watching or listening to this, I would definitely tell them like, you know, yes, we've all made mistakes. The most successful people have made mistakes. I've made so many, so many money mistakes, right? But it's about assessing those lessons and moving forward. And keep in mind that what you earn right now is, should not be the reason why you don't make progress, right? So there's a saying that my dad always used to tell me when I was younger, and it was, um, penny wise, pound foolish, right? And it basically means that, if you can't figure out how to manage your finances when you have a little bit of money, right? Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how much you earn. It doesn't matter if you win the lottery. If you haven't learned how to manage your money and built financial discipline, you're gonna, that money is just going to slip through your fingers and find its way away from you. And for anyone going through some harder financial times right now with the pandemic and everything going on, what advice can you give to them on where to start or if they feel really stuck or in a hole with all of their finances? Yeah, so this is a really difficult time, unfortunately, for so many people, for, you know, a lot of women in the Clever Girl Finance community um, and people just across the world. You know, the financial impact on top of the health crisis as a result of COVID has been devastating. And so for anyone who is going through financial difficulty right now, whether you've had your income cut, whether you've lost your job, whether your partner or you know, someone in your household has lost a job, you know, it can be very stressful and it can be very emotional. However, you can still create a plan and you can still take steps to help you weather through this season until things get better. A big mistake I see a lot of people who are going through difficulty in this season make is that they're not making that communication. They're assuming that their creditor, their lender, their service provider knows they're facing financial difficulties because they're hearing the statistics on the news or they're reading it on the news websites. But if you don't tell them, they don't know. And so many providers, creditors have created programs where they can defer your payments, where they can, um, put you into payment plans where they can waive fees, where they can waive collection, but you have to communicate. So letting them know, right, um, is something that you want to make sure that you do. And it can be embarrassing for someone who is like, well, does that mean that I'm 
you know, backtracking on my progress, my finances. Remember that COVID is not your fault. You didn't create this virus. It wasn't something that you went out and did that caused it, right? And so it's okay to seek the help if you need it. So that's the first thing. The second thing you want to do is really take a good hard look at your spending, whether you're spending in cash or you're leveraging a credit card and plan. Like you want to make sure that you're focusing on covering your core essentials. So your housing, your food, any medicines that you need, your core utilities and transportation to get those medicines or food or even to get to work if you are going to work outside of your home. So you want to make sure that you focus your spending on that. And even if you're leveraging a credit card, you can still budget to make sure that you are spending, you know, as mindfully as you can. So it could be switching from brand names to generic names, cutting back on things you don't necessarily need to buy right away that were, you know, that are splurges that you can wait until you get your income back up to purchase. And then think about ways that you can step outside of your comfort zone, step outside of your traditional skill set and start to find ways to bring money into the home. And this might mean doing a job below your skill set, and it's okay, there's no shame in that. It could be working customer service, delivery. Basically, your goal is to put food on your table and keep your lights on, right? It could be going through your closet and selling things you don't need. We're in a position where a lot of people are being very mindful of their spending. So you may have, for example, a stroller in your spare bedroom or in your garage that your kids have outgrown, but a new mom out there doesn't want to pay full price and she's looking for a pre-owned one. And you can easily sell that on like a Facebook marketplace, for example, and get some extra cash towards your bills or towards, you know, um, necessities. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Bola. We really appreciate the advice and information you provided for our audience. Thank you for having me here. Be sure to check out Clever Girl Finance to join her amazing supportive community on your financial journey as well.